Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Flink Forward, brought to you by Data Artisans. Hi, this is George Gilbert. We're with theCUBE today at uh, Flink Forward Data Artisans Conference, uh, annual conference here in San Francisco for the Apache Flink community. And we're joined by Andrew Gao from Capital One. Capital One's always doing bleeding edge use cases uh, with the latest technology. Andrew, good to have you. Thank you, it's good to be here. So tell us about your latest, most bleeding edge use case with Apache Flink. What are you, what are you guys trying to enable? Yeah, sure, for the last year and a half, me and a couple teams have been working on developing a fraud decisioning platform on Kubernetes. Uh, we've been running in production since September and we have three use cases on it now. Okay, so, so tell me about, let's pick one use case. Sure. And tell me, what is it about stream processing to start with that makes it better, and then let's talk about the Apache Flink tooling that's coming out to make it even more accessible. Sure, uh, in terms of what we're using Apache Flink for, uh, the, the use case I worked on specifically was uh, the one where customers go to a bank and they either cash their check or try to withdraw cash, and we deployed a defense there to make real-time decisions on their past transactions. And, and again, just to be clear, the defense is to make sure it's a, yeah, sort yeah. Of, it should be authorized, yes, that it's, yes. this is fraud, whether, not fraud. Whether they should call their, uh, the fraud operators or, or not, pretty much. Okay, so tell us how Flink made that better relative to what you were doing before. Sure, at Capital One, we're definitely sold on the idea of stream processing um, throughout the company, we're moving towards Kafka, copper-related architecture. Uh, we've had a pretty good experience um, just like building up features in real time uh, using Flink and then sending them off to our models, our machine learning models, to return a result. Oh, so, okay, so here the use case is sort of continuous learning for the models and to keep the application going Live well, <laughs> we're not so far to the point of continuously training models, though that, uh, that is probably the end goal. Yeah. But we will have our models that we've developed offline, uh, and then we'll use the transactions that are coming in through our streams to calculate these features, and send those features to the models, which will tell us uh, whether it's fraud or not fraud. Okay, so now, um, Capital One and a few other companies are really sophisticated and have known have been able to take the open source code, you know, and then put the sort of uh, um, uh, infrastructure around it to make it easy to operate, mm -hmm. easier, you know, for your uh, DevOps teams. Sure. What is it that you see coming from uh, the data artisans folks that might make that job much easier? So. <laughs> Unfortunately, we started developing our Kubernetes platform before any of this Data Artisans platform was announced. So we're excited to, we, we've already done some work uh, with deploying Flink applications on Kubernetes, but we'd be definitely excited to see what the original uh, contributors uh, have to offer with their Data Artisans platform. And um, in addition to the resource management, what about orchestrating you know, what's essentially a very distributed application where you have the compute and state management, you know, co-located on mm -hmm. nodes and in fact highly integrated. So things like, have you been able to do elastic scaling and repartitioning of the data and checkpoints, you know, for distributed state and then restoring that for rolling out new versions, things like that? So, uh, so far, at least for Flink, uh, we generally provision our clusters ahead of time. So there's no rescaling at the, the Flink cluster level. We actually have multiple clust Flink clusters running on like a single Kubernetes cluster. Uh, in terms of state management, so far, I, I won't say our experience has been painless, but it's been pretty good to us in terms of restoring from failures. Restoring from? Failures, like okay. if we have task managers that die, yeah. uh, Kubernetes can just let them die and it will recreate, it'll auto-heal pretty much. 
and recover from the checkpoint by itself. Okay, and um, have have you guys been monitoring the the capabilities uh, rolling out with the the DA platform? Yeah, yeah, especially with the resource manager. Um, it would. So right now, as I said, we do have multiple Flink clusters on the Kubernetes platform, and that was pretty much to address the issue of resources, uh, resource sharing, yeah. and that being a uh, problem. Uh, some apps, if one app died on the same uh, Flink cluster, it could impact the other apps. So we, we, our approach so far was to separate that, like uh, have multiple Flink clusters and separate them by namespaces. But it seems like the resource manager could offer some uh, a similar uh, feature. And so, what what are some of the things that you'd like to add that either your additional um, tooling uh, might 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 help with, or or where additional sort of application support framework in in the form of the DA platform might make some of your sort of wish list easier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's I didn't a hard mean to question. stump you, yeah. That's a hard. Because uh, you have to weigh between what's yeah, coming from I, the vendor we, we, and what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. We, we do have, there, there's a lot of things internally that we want to do. And uh, so far, we've pretty much uh, dealt with our problems and our, ourselves and uh, just did workarounds however much. So we haven't had too much experience uh, you know, directing that, that, type, that type of work towards the Flink contributors. Try, okay, okay. Well, it sounds like you're definitely pushing the envelope on uh, on production, and um, I, I imagine you see lots use, lots more use cases coming down the road. Yeah, we have three use cases right now that are running in production. Yeah. But this this fraud platform we're trying to build is supposed to handle pretty much all the bank fraud uh, all fraud, fraud use cases. Ultimately, well, ideally. Ideally. <laughs> wow. Okay. So. On that note, Andrew, we should end it and hopefully we'll see you back next year and you can tell us how far you've how far you've gone. All right, sounds good. So this is George Gilbert with Andrew Gao of Capital One, and we will be back after this short break uh, with more from Flink Forward in San Francisco.